Can you guess the home feature new homeowners hate most about their homes? The elements they can't stop staring at and fantasize about renovating most, from old wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, to tile countertops, to faux wood paneling, we all have our icks. Old light fixtures, wherever you are, I'm thinking of you. But there's one thing that consistently pops up on every single survey list, and that's the dark and narrow hallway. So in today's video, we're deep diving into all the options every single way you can use designer tricks on a budget to make your dark and narrow hallway something beautiful. I'm Lindsay, a former teacher DIY renovating our 71-year-old ranch-style home in Seattle. I've got a big project going on in my dark and narrow hallway. I've spent weeks and weeks researching hallway design, trying to figure out how I can both incorporate my design style and make this space more than just a pass-through to this side of the house. Welcome to my hall of doors. If you clicked on this video, I'm guessing you have a similar issue in your home. So let's take a look at all the options and see if we can find some style solutions together. Just in case you're not into DIY, let's start with some simple, easy projects that you can do in an afternoon. The easiest thing you can do is add a rugger. This is a long, narrow rug, usually two by five, two by seven, that's gonna add a little bit of warmth, color, pattern, or softness to the space. They usually don't cost very much if your hallway is the standard size, and you can even find some vintage online for a steal. Now with the area rug, you can go for a more traditional kind of pattern like this one. You could go for something that's bold and contrasty, especially if you don't wanna paint your walls. You can go for a bicolor graphic print if you're more modern and you can even look for something vintage. It's giving custom, beautiful designer space. Honestly, if you just have a long, white, bright hallway, adding a bold color in the rug can really add visual interest in an otherwise neutral home. That is not a boring hallway. <laughs> Although I love nice things, I love saving money, so I love to comb Etsy for vintage finds. I find vintage Turkish rugs to be really beautiful. They're a very flat weave, so they're pet-friendly, kid-friendly, in my experience, easy to clean, and you can generally find them in a wide variety of colors. I feel like a hallway is one of those small spaces where you can get away with things that you wouldn't put in a larger space. I ne wouldn't necessarily choose a neon green area rug for my living room, but I could see maybe making it work in a hallway space because it's fairly small and it will add so much personality to an otherwise sort of, you know, pass-through space. Next, change the paint color. That was my first step in our hallway, and I am the culprit here. When we first moved into this house, the hallway, like most of the house, was painted sort of a, you know, neutral color tone and I decided I really wanted to add some personality so I painted the walls navy blue. See what I mean with the dark color in the hallway through that arch? Doesn't it just call to you? Like it just makes you want to go back there and see what's going on. Although I am transitioning back to a brighter palette in there, I feel like if you want to try a dark color, a hallway is a great place to do it and that also goes for bold colors. I could see myself doing a lighter blue tone or a green, something that will grab your eyes attention and make you want to go back in that hallway and find out what exciting surprises are in store. Look at the difference between this all white space, all the wood trim, all the doors, all the walls, all the ceiling is painted white. It's still pretty because we've got a nice rug, we've got some beautiful art, we've got a little plant at the end of the hallway there. We could get a, a cuter plant stand, but compare that with this. Look at the difference, the depth that we get, how much more we can appreciate the woodwork when it's a slightly different color. If you're concerned about resale, I mean, that is not gonna impact your resale negatively. It's still neutral. I would say it would impact it positively because it highlights the wood trim and it makes it look even more exciting. Once you get your painting tools and the good music, some snacks, a good flow, maybe invite a friend over to help you if you hate painting. Somebody who knows how to cut in with the brush if you don't like to do that can be so simple to bust out in a few hours pretty quickly you'll have a completely new hallway. I love this look where it's sort of soft white walls with a soft beige on the doors and wood trim. It's just so fresh and pretty. It feels really timeless to me. Like you could change out the artwork, but it would always be beautiful. You could also go the opposite way and paint all the doors and woodwork trim white and the walls a different color. But for me, I don't know. It just doesn't feel interesting, contemporary. I like in a traditional space when you either close 
cloak the room in color. So ceilings, wood trim doors, everything one color. Or if you do some sort of very intentional contrast with the woodwork and trim, but maybe something other than white. Going for a bold wall color is a great option. And this green is so beautiful. I like how they've highlighted it with some contrasting artwork, like this Matisse print with the yellow. It's a really interesting idea. Now, even if you don't have an arched door, which most of us don't, I mean, wouldn't we all love this? It's gorgeous. But do you see how painting that door dark makes it so much more exciting. Think about if it was the same color as the wall, if it's just white, it would be beautiful if you were like right up on it, but you wouldn't notice it as much. You don't have to have an arch door for this to make such a huge difference. When I painted our front door, just a neutral tone and saw that little bit of contrast between the white wall, I instantly liked the door more. Before you race to replace, consider refinishing. Paint prices have been going up. I used to say painting a room was the cheapest, quickest, biggest, huge you just change you can make. Honestly, I don't know if I feel that way anymore, but I personally believe that you don't need the top of the line paint always for most projects. In a hallway, I definitely use eggshell finish so that it's easy to clean, yet hides imperfections in the wall. Generally, people go with flat paint on the ceiling, but I usually just use eggshell up there too. If you really want to go bold, you could go with peel and stick wallpaper. Now, this is going to take an afternoon, maybe most of a day if this is a really challenging project for you or if you have a lot of cutting to do around molding and trim in your hallway. But generally speaking, wallpaper in a hallway is a great option. Again, it's a small space so you can kind of get away with something you wouldn't do in a big room. Side note, wallpaper doesn't have to be bold and it doesn't have to be colorful. You can add textured wallpaper. They do make peel and stick textured wallpapers now, which are so beautiful and can be really cool backdrop for art. Artwork. You can also look for patterns in neutral colors. If you want to stick to a neutral palette or you think you might sort of change artwork or accessories in the future, you might want to choose a wallpaper pattern that's a little simpler. That way it won't compete with everything else. Unless you're a maximalist, of course, then you're going to want to go for a bold, colorful print on the wallpaper to highlight the colorful, contrasting, coordinating colors in your artwork. Just because you're going for wallpaper doesn't mean it has to be a floral either. I feel like a lot of people associate wallpaper with floral because floral wallpapers and just generally organic branches and leaves and things are really popular historically in wallpaper design. However, don't forget, there's this whole other type of wallpaper, geometric prints, where you can find something that's really linear and, you know, maybe just two to three colors, repeating pattern, and it just adds a lot of texture. I really like this one because it's layering in a lot of antique furniture with it. It definitely has traditional vibes, but it's very linear, very simple. It's only three colors. It definitely adds architectural drama. Although there is some very pretty baseboards and we've got this beautiful arched, I don't know, would you still call that a transom window even though it doesn't open? There's no crown molding in this space. It's a little awkward. It's between rooms. There's a doorway. I could see where this might have been a little challenging to design. That wallpaper really makes it feel taller and it brings it all together. It gives the room a personality. <laughs> I guess the hallway, are we considering a hallway a room? I think we should. The stone floors. Woo! Captivating. The wallpaper peeking through the door. Again, it's such a great design choice because it draws you. It makes you want to go into that hallway. And if you want to take your afternoon project just a little bit further, you can turn your dark and narrow hallway into a mini art gallery. All you have to do is find a couple of beautiful, bold pieces of art, beautiful frames. I found both of mine at my local thrift shop. You can install some picture lights above them, the battery power kind that has a remote. Instantly you've got ambiance without the big light. Look at this picture. I mean it's amazing to me how a little picture light on the wall just instantly makes it feel like an art gallery. It's it's pretty amazing. Now your hallway is more than just a pass-through, it's a destination. You can even find frames and paint some abstract art yourself. You can buy some vintage artwork from Etsy and pay to have it printed on a larger size to fit your thrifted frames. And I found some super affordable picture lights on Amazon. I'll link them down below. Now we're moving into projects you can do in a day. This is going to be a little bit more time intensive. You might need to use a few more tools, but ultimately it's a pretty quick change. If your doors are in good shape, but the hardware isn't your metal color of choice, I really want you to think about the hardware across 
your home, whether it be knobs or pulls or doorknobs or hinges as the jewelry of your interior design. When I'm sourcing mine, I personally wear a lot of, I guess not today other than my wedding set, but I personally wear a lot of gold jewelry and I'm very drawn to brass metal elements in my interior design. When we moved into our house though, every door, every hinge in the whole house was nickel, that like silver metal tone that you'll see around a lot. I personally just was very excited to change and add a little bit more warmth through the brass elements. You can go in person to your local mom and pop hardware store. I personally recommend supporting small business. You can also go to any hardware store near you, especially if you don't have any specialty shops near you and find some pretty great options. I went to my local big box hardware store and found beautiful glass doorknobs, brass, mortise lock sets that fit my salvaged interior doors. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> it's been amazing to see the change, to reach out and see that brass and that glass handle. I've used some antique glass doorknobs in my projects around the house, and I'm so excited with how the jewelry of this hallway space has completely elevated, and it makes everything else around it look better. I found it fairly simple to mix and match new mortise lock sets and door handle sets with vintage doorknobs. They're pretty standard in size and will screw onto that center pin pretty easily. I definitely had to play around with it a little bit, took a little longer than I originally thought, but worth every hour that I put into it. If you're changing out the metal color for handles, doorknobs, you also wanna carry that into the door hinges because they're all visible and it will even look more mismatched if they don't match. <laughs> I also go the farther step of changing out the hinges on my bifold closet doors. When they're open, I see that hinge. For my personal taste, it bothers me when they don't match. I'm continuing that brass all around the house. Next, add or extend baseboards. Of all the woodwork and trim projects that I have done so far in research doing, I find that baseboards seem to be a good gateway if you're a little nervous to try because it's a fairly simple process and if you have a miter saw or even a miter box, it's pretty easy to make the cuts and and make the measurements accurately. It's so much easier than crown molding. You can order it from your local hardware store, have it delivered to your door in the morning. You could work on the project throughout the day and get a lot accomplished. Once you get into the groove, you've got a good workflow, you can really crank through it. My best advice is to start in one space. So again, we're talking about hallway. A hallway isn't very large usually and is broken up by doors. The baseboard cuts will be fairly small. You'll cut into small sections. You won't actually have to spend that much money to upgrade and do baseboards in this part of your house. If it flows into another part of your home and you're interested in carrying the baseboards throughout, then you can chip away at it one room, one day at a time. If you have existing baseboards like we do, but you don't love the style, one thing I have found that's super cost-effective and a little, honestly, time-saving is extending the baseboards. What I did in our guest room and I'm planning to do in our hallway is buying a piece of baseboard that's about three inches to add on to our existing two and a half inch baseboard that's plain and flat, and then using caulk to smooth the surface between them so it looks like one piece and it is turning out so beautifully. Next up, something that is so simple, so cheap to do, peel and stick tile flooring. I know that it sounds a little crazy, but if you watch XO McKenna, she just recently put in a peel and stick tile floor in her bathroom, and it reminded me how simple of a project it is, how inexpensive it is. You can bust it out in a day, and even over tile, you can level the surface and then put the peel and stick tile on. You can put baseboard on and it will look like real tile. I put in a checkerboard style black and white floor in a kitchen years ago with peel and stick tiles. It was such a satisfying project. I bought some special scissors to cut the pieces and it was so easy, so much easier than tiling, not to mention less expensive. And if I made a mistake, I just ran down to the hardware store and bought a couple more tiles for a few more dollars. It was so wonderful. One thing I would recommend doing is you can go the extra mile if you really want these floors to last and take your baseboards out and then put them back in or replace the baseboards, but it's not necessary to do. It can turn out really great. They even make some now that you can grout between. The stone print on some of these looks so realistic. I just think there's so much potential with peel and stick floor tile. And my mom suggested I might try it in the kitchen. I'm anxious to do some real tiling in there, but it's a great option. This one is maybe more of a niche one, but you could do it in a day and that's retexturing 
plastering the walls in your hallway. If you're like us and you're living in a mid-century home that's been DIY wall textured 9,000 ways till Sunday over many decades and the texture is just different and strange everywhere, you might want to take some time to first lead test before you do any sanding, but you might want to sand down your drywall a little bit, make sure to wear a respirator, be safe. You can remove a popcorn ceiling in a day very simply with water and a scraper. There's a million videos on YouTube to do that. If I had popcorn ceilings, I would have made that video, but I'll link a couple great ones down below. You can also skim the walls with drywall compound or plaster. If you have plaster walls, if you want a softer finish, if you want to fill in any cracks or gaps, it can make a big difference in your ability to see your hallway as a fresh and bright space. And just, you know, those little things that bug you every time you walk through a space and your eye goes right there. Maybe I'm just that much of a visual thinker, but I'm so preoccupied with what I see visually. There are things in this house that I constantly look at and they kind of needle me and it's really exciting to eliminate them. When I did a bunch of sanding and wall repair in this hallway, definitely didn't get it down to as flat as I would like to have it. I removed so many bumps, I filled so many divots and it just felt so fresh when we painted it. Lime wash paint is a little bit more intensive than just painting your walls. There's a little bit of a process and layering involved. You can really make your dry wall look like plaster and have that sort of worn, aged, old world European style that's so beautiful right now. A hallway, again, is a fantastic space to try something like this because you can see how labor intensive it is. It's not a very large space. Then if you really love the results, you can carry it around to other spaces in your home. Finally, if you really want to go all the way in your one day makeover, design your ceiling. There are so many cool ways that you can bring in into your ceiling and I know I said it a billion times in this video but a hallway is such a great place to do it. This bold bicolor printed wallpaper draws the eye up and makes the space feel taller while this neutral print is calm and inviting. Paintable textured wallpaper can look like custom tin tiles or you can go for something as simple as peel and stick wallpaper in an inspiring print. You don't have to cover the whole ceiling you could just replace your grates with something more modern and elegant or you could go as far as installing faux beams to make the space completely your own. Think about like a salvage tin ceiling Ceiling, for example, you can go to your local salvage yard and find these ceiling tins and put them up. They're so beautiful. You can also buy them new, but I'm always, always going to push go to your salvage yard. There's some really cool stuff down there. The texture on this ceiling, it is just so exciting. It's giving old world European ornate ceiling. It would just make any white box boring space in a hallway feel so designed and exciting. Try painting your ceiling a different and bold color to add contrast and visual interest into an otherwise boring hallway. In my recent video about replacing our doors, working on our hallway makeover project, I'll link that down below, I floated two different paint options with regards to designing my ceiling. I picked this absolutely stunning Benjamin Moore color. It's called Wenge. I wanted to paint the doors on either end of the hallway that color and the ceiling that color and then possibly the wall around those two ends of the hallway like this picture but I also found this picture to be really traditional and beautiful so it's kind of like this sort of modern take on this do we try this new thing it's a little out there but it's kind of intriguing could be gorgeous or do we keep it more like traditional simple expected a lot of people share their opinions it was really evenly balanced a lot of people were interested in this a lot of people thought this was a classic more you know traditional way to go so so let me know. What do you think down below? And if you're liking this video so far, you'll definitely want to subscribe so you don't miss the big makeover. At this point, we've gotten our hallway to a pretty blank slate, and now it's time to really get in there and style it and make it amazing. Once I figure out all these last little details, that will be coming out very soon. Now we're going with the big dogs, things you can do in a full weekend. These are going to take a few more tools, a lot more time, and honestly, if you're very, very new, DIYer, you might need longer than a weekend, maybe a couple of weekends to fully finish it. One of my things I always want to say is take your time. There's no rush. If you make a mistake, that's okay. You can always fix it. It's better to just get started and see how you do. You're going to learn as you go. You're never going to feel confident until you try something, do something, then you become confident. And so I think the time to try something like this might be this weekend. The biggest one that I've done already in our hallway and I cannot stop staring at 
replace your old hollow core doors. I'm loving the natural wood doors, even though the walls are white, all the door casings, the baseboards, the crown molding, it's all white. But these natural wooden doors add so much character. If it was all white, it just wouldn't be as inspiring. Your doors don't just have to be white. Look how beautiful this is where all the woodwork and walls are white, but they've let the door be, it looks black to me, really pretty. The contrast is so inspiring. Often contrast makes something feel like more architectural and detailed, whereas all one color, especially white, makes it feel unfinished. My best advice, especially if you're frugal like me, don't wanna spend a fortune buying all new doors for your house, or you just flat can't afford to, I can't, then then go to your local salvage yard, stock your local salvage yards, websites, call, put things on hold, do lead testing in the store if you must, search and search. You can find the most amazing, beautiful, solid core panel doors. If you look and you're willing to, you know, do a little bit of DIY, a little bit of touching up, sanding, painting, you can really make a huge transformation on such a low budget. Don't get me wrong, it's still gonna cost money, but instead of like $250, $350 a door, I'm telling you, a lot of the doors in our house, I spent $20 a door for really beautiful things. I think the most expensive door that I bought was $75, but that was by far the most expensive. Every other door was $45, $35, $20, $20. I think I even got one for $15. If you want to see my whole process of how I retrofitted these salvage single panel doors in our house and installed them using a mixture of new and antique hardware, I'll link the videos where I worked on that down below. I guess you could consider those the first couple episodes of the hallway makeover. I'm still in the process. It is amazing what a difference new doors can make. New to me doors, I guess. <laughs> it's not surprising that I'm drawn to this hallway way. It's got very similar light fixtures, better than mine, but similar to mine. And it's got vintage rugs and these natural wooden doors. I love it. It's so pretty. It's so unique. Look at how much visual interest that has. If you just bought your home and it has wood doors, like stained wood trim doors, take a, take a beat before we just paint it all out white. And no shame. If you want to paint it all out white, like if that's your dream, please do that. But just take a beat before you do it. Because what if you kept some of the wood? You might find an idea you like if you do a little research before you just go straight to painting it out white. Another big project is adding or changing door casings. Now, door casings are the wood trend that goes around a door. This can be a very simple flat panel like was in our house when we moved in. Definitely was not original to the house. Probably was put in within the last 15 to 10 years. It's fine. It just isn't our style. I really wanted something with a lot more texture, a lot more traditional vibe. I'm so excited about the change that this new wood trim has given in our home. I will be changing out the door casings across the entire house. Honestly, the hallway, it's just so beautiful. They all look so nicely together and it just adds more interest to the space. What's really cool about it too is since we're keeping it fairly simple with the paint colors, they're gonna look really amazing once they're painted. There's a lot of different options when it comes to door casings and one thing that I have found super helpful is you can usually buy them in sets. They're pre-measured and pre-miter cut, which is really helpful. They're super close to your door. You should always measure the existing trim or the door opening before you make cuts. If you're replacing trim, just measure the trim that's there and make sure you're buying trim that's the same width as the trim that you're replacing. That way you'll have less wall repair to do, a little time-saving hack. It's so simple. You actually don't need to cut the mitered side, you just cut the flat side at the bottom. In our earlier simpler projects, we talked about changes to the walls, but if you have a whole weekend, you could make changes to the floor. One thing you can do is tile the floor in a hallway. You could pick some really cool tile and make a statement. I think it's okay for a hallway to have a different flooring than the rest of the house, especially if it already has different flooring and you don't like it. If you have carpet in your hallway, for example, that you really want to break up, you could rip it out and tile over it or even put in a laminate or hardwood or try to match your existing wood if you have that adjacent to the hallway. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but flooring generally is a fairly simple process. You just have to decide what you want to do 
and go for it. I know in some parts of the country, in some parts of the world, tile is the optimal choice just for its durability. So if that's you, tiling is a doable project. It definitely would take a weekend to demo the old floor, install the tile, but by the end of the weekend, you could have a completely new hallway. You could buy new tile, of course, but you know what I'm gonna say, go to your salvage yard. I was looking around the tile room at one of my local salvage yards recently for some upcoming projects, trying to find something unique. I was blown away by the array of tile and designer tile at the crazy prices, leftover tons and tons of boxes from projects or local design design companies liquidating different items that aren't selling. So now they're just sitting there brand new in the box. Handmade art tiles, tons and tons of boxes of beautiful tile from Mexico that was all handmade clay tile. There's so many options. And I think, you know, when you go to the tile showroom and you look at all the brand new stuff, that's all shiny, really high price tag, it can just be a bit overwhelming. It's really liberating to go to salvage and find brand new tile in the box, not even ever opened at such crazy deals. If you are patient, you can find something amazing. If you're like us and you have hardwood in your house and you're not doing a tile or something else, you could refinish the floor in your hallway. Hallways get a lot of foot traffic, especially if you're a shoes house, you know, you might have some scratches or discoloration and the staining. That's one area that might be small enough to try out a floor sander for the first time. It's not a huge space and it would be a great place to try something and then see if you can spread it across the house. And if you already know your stain color up from the rest of your house, then you can easily sand just your hallway and restain and seal it and it will look amazing. If you really want to go all the way with your weekend makeover, why not try creating a hallway library? If your little mid-century home is anything like ours, you might have a hard time finding space for bookshelves, but a hallway might be the ticket to finding a spot for all of your beloved favorites. If you have even a little stretch of wall, you can put in wall shelves that are narrow depth, focusing on your paperbacks or hardcover books that are smaller, like novels, not like big coffee table books that are not going to impede the width of the hallway too much, this can really create a lot of interest too. When we went to France, we stayed in a little Airbnb apartment near the Eiffel Tower. The hallway there was all bookshelves and they weren't fancy shelves or anything, but in this small space, it made space for a pretty sizable library for this homeowner. They were amazing. I just had so much fun walking around, looking at all the titles. Even though I couldn't read most of them, I just thought it was so beautiful the way they were displayed and such a smart use of a small space. You don't have to live in a small apartment like that to do that. You can do that in your home and it creates interest. It gives you a fantastic storage, lets your books make a statement. Whenever you have guests, I guarantee they're going to linger after they, you know, use the restroom, look at all your titles and maybe ask to borrow a few. I mean, it's just so inspiring. Look at the shelving. It's, it's beautiful. I really love it. <laughs> if you're not into books, you could make this hallway shelving system for something else. This collection of ceramic jars is so impressive. It's really a fantastically creative way to house them all. It makes this small space really inspiring. Not to mention unique. Wouldn't everyone want to talk about what are those? But if you're interested in wood paneling, this is a really cool way to do it. And I like how they've added hooks along the top for just quick coat storage. That would be so awesome if you were having a party. You'd have a ton of places for people to put their coats or shoes or whatever. Whatever. The little bench is such a fantastic use of space. They had just enough space and they built that long bench. It looks so clean, so modern, but they've got this sort of traditional door in the back. It's stunning. Stop incessantly thinking about changing your hallway and start creating your design plan. Even if you're not ready to purchase supplies and get to work, you will feel so much more confident when you are ready if you have a plan in place and you're excited about the direction you're going in. If you're curious to find out how my little hallway makeover turns out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap that little bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new episode. My hallway makeover episode is coming very soon and you won't believe how it turned out. As always, these are my opinions, so don't forget to share yours in the comments down below. And if you're having any design dilemmas in your house that you need advice or a little design help with, let me know. If you like talking design with me in today's video, you're gonna love this one. Come on in, let's decorate for fall with a little spooky details just in time for Halloween. I'll be back next Sunday with the next episode and I'll see you over in that video.